From Bangkok, Thailand. Welcome, Welcome to, to the GCN Show! Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, we've got an endurance challenge special, a whole host of your hacks and bodges, and we wrap up all the biggest racing news as well. We have some great tech for hipsters, a new bike down that you're gonna like, a Cervelo with its drivetrain on the wrong side, and all of our usuals as well. Are you getting excited about July, by the way, mate? Yep, Seems a I bit have premature. got my July special GCN t-shirt on. Where's yours? Uh, I'm not that excited about it yet. You just haven't got one. It is time now for our caption competition. You'll remember that last week's photo was this one of Ian Boswell. Well, we have a winner for you. And the winner is Vison Ding. Congratulations to you. You said, what do you mean they got the embrocation and chamois cream mixed up? Yeah, I did very much like that one. I did, yeah. That's pretty much the face that he would be pulling as well, isn't it? Now, make sure you get in touch and we will send you your GCN swag. If you didn't win, don't worry, because here is another photo for you to get your tea stuck into. Dan, do you want to get us started? Oh no, don't leave me with Contador. They don't call him El Pistolero for nothing. I'm sorry, yeah. mate. <laughs> it's really bad, right? <laughs> now, if you think you can beat Dan, and I suggest that you probably can, then make sure you send in your caption competition entries in the comment section down below. Are you ready? Yeah. What for? What is Bazooka? <laughs> oh, I'll do that again. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Now, this week's Pro Wattage Bazooka winner is Philippe Gilbert. Well done, for, Philippe. Yeah, congratulations, Philippe, for his race winning sprint in the Tour of Luxembourg. He put out 1,432 watts, as he put it, perfectly timed in the last 80 metres of that stage. And yeah. as you pointed out, it was a, on an uphill finish, so presumably we'd already been gunning it at like 700 watts. Yeah, yeah, so then to put that peak power out is thoroughly deserving well deserved. of what is Bazooka. This week's viewer, what is Bazooka, goes to a young lad named Noah. Now, we put this video up on our Facebook page at the weekend, and I think he is thoroughly deserving. Look at this cadence! That's and it goes on impressive. for ages. Well done, Noah. I tell you what, mate, I wouldn't like to line up against him in a race nowadays. No, I mean, me neither. The edge. Uh, if you would like to nominate somebody for a What is Bazooka next week, then all you've got to do is use this hashtag on social media. The rise in popularity of the Ultra Endurance Challenge continues this week with the news that the record for riding across Europe from east to west has been broken by a young British rider uh, called James McLaren. Youngish, I think. No, young. He's 29. He's under 30. Very young. Young, youngish. Anyway, he managed to do the 3,910 mile challenge in just 29 days and 18 hours, including an epic final day of 244 miles in the saddle, Ooh. just to make sure that he did break that 30 day barrier. Now, he did it all in aid of cancer research and living water Africa, but the most epic thing of all is the fact that he did the whole lot in one set of cycling kit. Oh! Well, that really is an endurance challenge, isn't it? Yeah. He sure he did it by himself as well, otherwise, that would have been. An endurance challenge for anyone within a, I don't know, five mile radius, perhaps? Yeah, very true. Yeah, now another record that you perhaps didn't think needed attempting, but sure enough someone has, is Everesting on a fixie. And the first man to do it is Joseph Kendrick, who chose a particularly uniconic climb in London, rode it 234 times over what? a 21 hour period, racked up 344 kilometres in order to get that requisite 8,800 metres. That is ridiculous. Does he have to pedal down the hill as well if he's on a fixie? Yeah, I don't know. Well, it, look, check it out, here's a photo of him. Maybe he did take his feet off the pedals and that's why he's fallen off at the bottom. Oh my goodness. Or maybe he's just blown his doors and desperately reaching for that banana. Yeah. Anyway, news of all these epic challenges has got us thinking. What are the coolest and greatest epic challenges that have yet to be done? We'd love for you to tell us what they might be. So we're not necessarily thinking about things such as the race across America. We're thinking about maybe the Pacific Rim or a Cape to Cape or I don't know, any other kind of- Trans-Siberia. How long can you spend in one pair of shorts? Those yeah. kind of endurance challenges. <laughs> well, almost 30 days at least is the record for that one. Anyway, if you could let us know in the comment section just down below, what are the greatest and the hardest and the coolest epic challenges still to be done, then we're going to compile 
a top 10. Yeah. And then, with the 10 follow-up videos, whilst we send Tom last off round the globe <laughs> to tackle them. Yeah. <sighs> now time for Cycling Shorts. We will start Cycling Shorts this week with some very exciting news from the US, and that is that the city of Atlanta is committing a billion dollars. One million dollars. <laughs> no, right. no, firstly, that impression is terrible, and secondly, it's a billion. A not billion? A billion dollars. To, oh yeah. Seriously, the script says a billion. To improving cycling infrastructure in the city as part of their Walk, Bike, Thrive initiative. Wow, that, that is, cool, isn't it? is an incredible amount of money. Although they are investing it over the course of the next 25 years, with the aim being that in the next 25 years, they'll be one of the top 10 cycling cities in the US. Good ambition. They should achieve it, I think. Not wanting to be outdone, however, was the European Union, who last week released a report named Moving Cycling Forward. Now, this is a Europe-wide strategy to get more people participating in cycling. And it will bring, I quote, Significant economic, environmental and health related benefits in terms of reduced congestion and pollution, less dependence on fuels, new jobs and better public health. Thank you. You know what, Dan? I'm inclined to agree. I think that's what it will bring. Now, this last week marked the passing of the legend that is Muhammad Ali. And among all the amazing hundreds of stories and anecdotes about him, this one is particularly one of my favourites, actually. Do you know, Dan, why he started boxing? No. No? Okay, so at the age of 12, poor old Muhammad Ali had a bike stolen, his beloved Schwinn bike. On reporting the theft to a police officer, he also apparently said that he would whoop whoever had stolen it. Whoop. To which whoop, to which the policeman replied that he had better learn how to throw a punch before throwing down challenges like that. And so, Muhammad Ali duly went and joined a boxing club, learned how to punch, Wow! and the rest is history. Who knows where we'd be now if we'd uh, had our bike stolen at 12? Well, I actually did have a bike stolen. Uh, I believe it's just my lack of guns that's holding my boxing career back. Yeah, yeah, it's just the lack of biceps that's all that's holding <laughs> you back. There's been some great news actually in the last week for data nerds. And that is that live rider data will be back on our TV and computer screens at the upcoming Tour de Suisse. And that is due to a partnership with Velon. So we'll be seeing things like riders' heart rate and presumably their power data on our screens as well, though the exact metrics have yet to be confirmed. Yeah. Now you'll notice that Dan said returning to our screens. Now many of you might remember SRM's live tour tracker from a few years ago where live rider data was streamed onto your computer. But check this tweet out from Amati showing 1989 Mark Maddio riding up a climb with live rider data beamed onto TV screens. Yeah. Uh, incredible. No. I have no idea. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. And so we googled the look max one power meter and sure enough, there it is. A genuine power meter from 1989 that actually looks seriously trick. Yeah. Clean that head unit. I'm looking forward to seeing some rider data again, but I'm astounded that it was already about 27 years ago. Now, we'd like to finish this week's cycling shorts by sending Jason's very best wishes to young Keegan Girdleston, who was involved in a very bad accident in a race down in Italy at the weekend. As we record this, he's still in a critical condition in hospital. So hang in there, buddy. We're all thinking about you. It's now time for that very exciting point in the GCN show where we announce the winner of a competition. So, the person who will be very shortly riding around some Reynolds 46 aero wheels is... Nathaniel Balby of Canada. Well done. Now, if you didn't win this week, then don't panic. You've still got time to get your entry in for this week's competition, which is one of three Physique 00 saddles, which are seriously pimp. So make sure you enter that competition now for the end of the show. Tech of the Week this week sees a couple of brilliantly bonkers, if not earth-shattering, Kickstarter projects. The first of which is this one, which presumably now is the hipster's choice when it comes to electric bikes. It's called the Super 73, and it features, and I quote again, a murdered out frame. What's a murdered out frame? I've no idea. But it also features a handily positioned, if slightly riskily positioned, beer bottle holder. Oh, my wine! <laughs> oh, he's chucked his load in the excitement. <laughs> Yeah, that does look a bit dicey, doesn't it? A thousand watt motor? Check. Pedal assist? Check. Road legal? You actually will need to check, depending on where you live. But we haven't let that deter us, because GCN's R&D division has been busy. 
check it out. We've got our own, not quite electric bike, coming very soon. I didn't realise we had our own R&D department. Yeah, yeah, they've not been very busy. They did make some wooden rollers once. The greatest rollers ever created! Well, that looks interesting, but we'll go back to the hipsters theme, because presumably, if you are a proper hipster, then you'll want to craft your own bike. You'll oh, probably yeah. want to craft your own beer to go with it as well. Oh, yeah. But this next Kickstarter, Kickstarter, should I say, is about the former. So, apparently, you can handcraft your own bike to your own design in just five hours with bamboo. Check it out. Here is a bamboo bike, and here is a time-lapse video proving that you can make it in five hours. That is, that's just bonkers. Yeah. Right, yeah. from a bike which took five hours to craft to a bike which probably took over 5,000 hours to design. Oh, mate, that segue was seamless. Know, nice I work. I thought you would like that. Yeah, so last week, British Cycling revealed the bike that lots of their track rides will be using at the Rio de Janeiro Olympics in a couple of months' time. So they've collaborated with a Canadian company called Cervelo. And they've come up with this. <laughs> Who, mate? It's called Cervelo. All right. It's called the T5 GB. And it looks mightily impressive, I have to say. It does, but... Their drivetrain is on the right hand side of the bike. Oh, yeah. So, you might have missed it a couple of weeks ago. Felt debuted a new track bike with the drivetrain on the left. So, did British Cycling just not believe that it saves watts? Or did they just miss it? Mm. Yeah. Ooh. Are they did back at British Cycling panicking? Those five or degrees confident? of yore are going to be bugging them, aren't they? But I don't think they're going to be bugging them quite as much as that chain set. Look at that. Where's that from? That's from Mark Meadows' bike, which we featured earlier. Ah, oh, 1989. Fair enough. That, that, yeah, that makes sense. The Criterium du Dauphiné kicked off on Sunday with an incredibly hard uphill prologue. Now, it was only four kilometres long, but at an average gradient of 10%, it put some big time gaps into people. Yeah, it certainly did. First of the big hitters to set off on his ride was Chris Froome of Team Sky, and he duly delivered, he set the benchmark for all the others to follow. But Alberto Comstor came out later with an absolutely storming ride to take yeah. quite a convincing win. And also, Froome's former teammate Richie Port managed to slot himself into second position as well. Very interesting, that one. Now, it might only have been a 12 minute long test, but it's got us eagerly anticipating, some more than others, yep. the battle for yellow in July. And there are a few riders that look like they've got a bit of work to do, don't they? Yeah. Thibaut Pino, Fabio Aru, both of whom must be a little bit disappointed. Yeah, particularly the latter. At least Pino has shown some good form so far in 2016. Aru True. really hasn't performed at all well so far this year, has he? And the Tour de France really is now looming. Now, one rider that wasn't enamoured at all with that prologue course was Essex Quickstep's Tony Martin. Now, of course, normally on a 4K prologue, he'd be one of the favourites. He would. But not when it's 10% uphill. <laughs> so he took to Twitter to describe it as a circus. Yeah, now that caused quite a lot of debate. Most people seem to be quite supportive of the stage, including Tom de Moulin, who also took to Twitter and replied to Tony, uh, I disagree, like you, my chances of winning such a time trial will be lower than a flat one, but I think this is nice and cool to watch. I have to agree. I don't think I want to see an uphill prologue at the start of every single stage race, but I was quite intrigued yesterday. Variety is the spice of life. Yeah, and also I think what's quite cool is that you and I could now go to Leger and compare ourselves directly to Alberto Contador and Chris Froome over a four kilometre long yeah. climb that's pretty much close to traffic. I might leave that to you, sir. Why don't, don't we mind. send Lasty? <sighs> oh, f there's another bit. Uh, right, over in the States, Megan Garnier, she continued her amazing run of form by winning the Philadelphia Cycle Classic, which is the latest round of the UCI Women's World Tour. Now, there are a whole load of attacks over the final lap of the race, but they were all nullified, mainly in part, or mainly, it has to be said, down to Garnier's teammates. So ferocious was Garnier's sprint at the end of that race that she actually put three whole seconds oh. into the second place finisher, which was Elisa Longo Borghini, with Amelusic in third place, riding for Canyon SRAM. It's time now for hack forward slash bodge of the week. There have been yeah. some absolutely brilliant ones. We've got this week. loads for you, so let's crack on with them. Uh, Paul Hyle sent us this one, and it's another chain keeper. <laughs> and he's made it for front and rear wheels using old wheel skewers and a cut down T towel rail. I think that's a hack, that is. Yeah, hack from me. Yeah, all right, this next one, hmm, from Mateusz Barcici. Uh, who has found this outside his university in Poland? Someone has made a mud guard out of a tyre, which is pretty innovative. Yeah, I think that's a hack. Yeah. I like that. It's like a fat bike mudguard. <laughs> yeah, fair play, that's cool. That's a hack. 
Slash Podge. Yeah. Definitely a podge. Uh, I like this one too. It's from Ben Thorne, or his cousin <laughs> sent it into us. Now, this is how he stores his water bottles in his kitchen at home. I wish I thought of that actually. I'm going to do that. That then. is right up your street, Dan. Yeah. Mine is just in a, personified. Mine are in a box underneath the sink, but uh, still, I'd like to do that. Right, the next one, Alex Piri. I'm not entirely sure. I think that's a bodge. Yeah. Isn't well, it? His zip's broken, but that's going to take forever to get off. Not very aero, I don't suppose, is it? No. No. Um, how do you cool off if you get hot? I don't know. Mm, good point. Stuart Smith has said that those noodle car wash mitts are great for cleaning cassettes. That's quite a good tip, that. Yeah. Good hack. Fair play, Stuart. And then this one, someone's put a lot of time and effort into yeah. this one. A Buck 55 RU has designed and made some of those floating rollers. That's very cool. Yeah, I bet they work a treat as I well. They, they look do. really, really good. Right, you start to realise I, that I've got a slight fetish for homemade chain keepers. Oh, because here's another, another one, one from Rivaldo. What I like about this one is just a simple quick release with an extra wheel lock nut to keep it in place. Oh, and it looks like the chain keeper goes up and down oh, if you change really? gears. Please keep sending those in. We're down on more and more of them. Yeah. <laughs> right, this next one, this is a genuine hack. Final one. It's Yeah, okay, it's not something that we haven't seen before, but still. It is a great tip if you suffer from punctures a lot. Check this out. Just inject some sealant into your inner tubes for it's pretty much puncture-proof yeah. tyres, yeah? And a bit of extra weight. But then that'll put you off. All right, thanks very much to Jay Sanders for that one. That is a definite <laughs> hack. Yeah, if you would like to send us any of your hacks and bodies, it's mainly hacks this week, it has to be said, uh, you can use the hashtag GCN hack on social media. Yeah, and Dan would love to see any more of your chain keepers <laughs> as well. Yeah. <laughs> Dom Estique has picked out some brilliant tweets for us this week. First up, I can see why I like this one, from Gregory Rast. Someone else fixing a flat tyre like me? Hashtag old school. Yeah, he had quite a few replies to that actually, Rast. Sean Yates and Daniela Bernati both replied saying yes, they do indeed still fix their inner tubes, which is great to see. Which I do from up. time to time as well. Dom's other tweet of the week comes from Julian Alaphilippe, the Frenchman from Etix Quickstep, who put this beautiful photo up and put, wow, Beautiful. Hashtag Morsey. I'm inclined to agree. It does look great. That does look very nice, Julian. I think that's about to rumble. Mm. Right, let's give it a go. Someone else still fixing a flat tyre like me? Hashtag old school. Sorry. <laughs> I was thinking about soup. <laughs> Three comments of the week for you this week. The first one came under last week's GCN show from James Lawrence, who said, Dan's shirt is the best GCN shirt colour scheme yet. Even on Dan, is how we ended it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, at least you got a new shirt. This I have, yeah. Hopefully that'll be, uh, that'll be as good as well. I think it is, actually. Right, next up, another one actually about you, Dan. From Nathan Edinser, who says, watch out for Dan. You know what he's like with those name stickers. One second it's yours, the next he's sleeping with a bike. And I think Nathan's referring to uh, the new Orbea that I had uh, sprayed up to my own specifications. I have absolutely no idea what he's talking about. You anyway. got any name stickers left? Yeah, I've got loads. Oh. I've got a bucket load. <laughs> Last comment comes from Macadamia who said, who was the other recent Tour de France winner that didn't win the Dauphiné? Simon, can you just uh, jog my memory? <laughs> that was, of course, underneath our Criterion de Dauphiné preview show. Uh, Vincenzo Nibli is not going to make the Dauphiné. Holy, 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 holy. There we go, jog that memory. Yeah. Am I uh, finished yet? <laughs> <laughs> On the channel this week, on Wednesday, it is how to ride long climbs faster. You've tackled numerous climbs. I have. At a respectable pace. Oh, thanks. But now you want to go faster. I do. There's no getting around the suffering, I'm afraid. Oh. But the satisfaction you'll get will be well worth it. And here's how. Cue montage. Then, on Thursday, it is top five most dangerous cycling descents. Ooh. And then on Friday, it's Ask GC Anything, episode 16. Saturday's pro bike is Arnaud de Mars Lapierre. Sunday, we've got the Women's Tour preview, plus another unboxing. And then on Monday, we explain clipless pedal choices to you, so you can find out which ones you probably need to buy. It's time now for extreme corner now last week 
we had a comment saying that cross country wasn't extreme enough for extreme corners. Yeah, I saw that comment. Yeah, well, we've got some downhill for you. <laughs> we kind of agreed with you, so here we go. Check it out, this is from the recent downhill World Cup in Fort William in Scotland, and it is extreme. I would admit that was slightly more extreme than last week's. It was a little bit, but Dan, I don't really notice, a former cross country rider, finished 17th. Yeah, I did notice, doesn't surprise me, super skilled XC yeah. rider. Yeah, even had his seat up, so there we go. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, this does, as always, mean it's the end of the GCN show, but before we show you another video or two to go to next, Dan's t-shirt, by the way, available in extremely limited numbers, now from the GCN shop, so you can get your celebratory July t-shirt a little bit early. Yeah, pre-July, or June shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com Yeah. Now, those videos that we were going to tell you about, just up there is a new one about aluminium, things you didn't know about it, and why you shouldn't overlook it in your quest to buy your next bike. Meanwhile, down here are seven steps to your perfect training plan. Just here is a globe. If you click on that, it subscribes you to the channel, which is absolutely free. And just down below is a little thumb like that. Click on that if you've liked this show.